Hello comrade, the Dennis show is not rude and we share our ideas, so let's talk about the best farming setup in 2023, modded and vanilla and different ideas and different combinations and you can pick and choose. Let's go! Okay, so we will talk about different vehicle setups and what you can expect in what year and after that I will go to different farming setups and how you can set them up and how you can make best use of your farms um, either with the distribution office or without and at the end I will make a section where I talk about logistics so how you can pull out the best way to pull out some crops out of the fields and uh, how you can set up uh, silos so they don't look absolutely ugly <laughs> So, let's get started with the vehicles. Here we are talking about all vehicles. From left to right, uh, there are different setups. We start with the early game setup, which is the crappiest structure you can get. It's T128. Um, it's slow. It has a bad harvesting speed, speed level of 17, it only drives 15 kilometers an hour. Um, the combine is also not great. It is um, slow and slow <laughs> on both uh, levels. Yeah, and then you can have a SKD truck, which is available from the start. It's quite good, but uh, there are better variants, but not available to us. The SKD one has a loading capacity of 10 tons of crops so we go on the next setup and uh, the tractor you can get is much better and it's available three years into the game mm, it's faster and it has a speed level of over 20 25 so it can drive 35 kilometers an hour which is a big jump from the other tractor double the speed to get to the field and double the speed sowing the field then you have um, a combine harvester which has a speed level of 30 uh, you can get it as a soviet model a little bit later in the game or you can uh, buy the western model which is available from the start which also has the same speed level all mid game so um and <laughs> the wrong cover tool oh, i'm sorry i have bought a small skd which is an error it should be the big skd like in the first one then we have the late game setup which consists of a tractor which is slightly better not there are not big jumps in the tractor business anymore the um, combine harvester is the fastest you can get from the west it has a speed level of 35 it's the dom 86 i will pull the all the vehicles at the end here so yeah and the big thing is the kmz truck which has a uh, good speed and has a good loading level of 12 tons of crops which makes really a difference. And uh, the last setup is the model setup. So we have a beast of a tractor, which is the K700A. He has a speed level of let's see, 40 <laughs> and a, a speed of 44 kilometers an hour. So he gets fast to the fields and uh, sows the fields super fast. The uh, combine harvester we already know, it's the same one, uh, fastest western one. And for the tractor trailer combination, I picked the KPA3 you get from the workshop. It's a beast, but it is available from 19, mid 1970s. Um, it's fast and it can load 16 tons of crops. If you uh, are a little bit earlier in the game, you can go to the cars which i really really like i like my tractor trailer combinations and it can load 13 tons of crops and it's um, available in the 60s so yeah these are the setups um, here i show them on the screen you can see which one you want <laughs> take some notes or not so uh, in the early game you have no choice in the mid game you have a choice but uh, simply buy the best things you can get in the late game, it's a little upgrade and I will come to it when the farm setups come, what difference does it make? And uh, yeah, the modded one is a little bit over the top. I also like them if you want to super optimize your farms. 
So let's go to the next segment. Here we have a uh, mid game setup, which I really prefer. It's um, for vehicle available from the mid 1960s. A good tractor or oh, mediocre <laughs> tractor, mediocre harvester, and our mediocre <laughs> cover tolls, but it will do the job. And um, they will do a row of fours because there are four harvesters and four tractors. So I say, so this, so this, so this. And after that, they will go to the next fields you assign in the order you assign them. So, so this, so this, so this, so this. And after they have finished this one, they should simply go to the next field on the opposite side. And they either go to the next field or go to refueling, um, which can cost you some time. Usually they make one field or two, uh, depending on the tractor and on the fuel calculation of the game. So, yeah, this is how they are assigned and this is how they should work. So let's look how it depends out. We are on the 2nd of March. On the 3rd of March, they move out. So let's go on super speed. And yes, you see, they first go to the small fields. Next, they went to the bigger fields. The good thing about the small fields is they are sown very fast. So they start to grow very fast, which means you have an early harvest which means uh, they are a surplus to the efforts of your farm, which is really great. The bigger fields are start to grow after they are finished sowing. So this is how the farm works and how the assignment works and how you can optimize them. Optimize always by uh, the driving length, have the farm in the center position. Maybe not like here, you can push the farm here. So if a vehicle wants to refuel in mid work, it is better. The, um, <laughs> this is the best thing I can do with the silos, with the vanilla silos, but uh, it looks like a factory connection spaghetti, so I don't like it as much. I will come to it in the last part, in the logistics part, uh, what I think are better options for this mess. Yeah. So let's go to the next part, which is the performance of the vehicles, uh, performance of the farms and the vehicles and the different setups. Here we are testing our fields and the first setup is the initial bed you can build for your vehicles and it's the worst vehicle setup you can get and it can make you see here eight fields for one medium farm which is okay and now we are in the winter and you see not all fields are harvested but we make use of what we get and it is not so bad after all. We will see how much we get into the silos in a minute. The setups are always overtaxing, so I try to push out the maximum amount of uh, crops I can harvest from the fields and not underrate the fields, but uh, push more than I can do. Uh, and what we get, we get, and it's okay. So in every silo, we have uh, nearly 70%, 540 tons. And in addition, we have some stuff in the farm. So we have 50 tons in the farm. So 550 times four roundabout is um, 2000 tons and additionally nearly 2200 tons, which is a really good result. This setup is the mid game setup. Uh, we have three additional fields on the top and uh, our block at the bottom and you see here we are in the end of the harvest season um, we are in the 23rd of october so a lot of time is still to go we have a whole month to pull out everything from the fields but you see that the fields are quite uh, heavy loaded the problem is now we have better machinery because it's the mid game setup but our tractors are uh, our tractor trailer combination uh, the skds do not keep up with the whole field business so even though we could pull out more from the fields and have one more month to go the farm will not make it if you have modded tractors like the case it will be fine but if you haven't some will left on the fields but in the end, it's also quite okay setup. But if you compare to the initial setup, you will not gain as much. So let's look into the silos. 
here we have, you see, 500 tons, which is less than the first one. Even though we used the trick of early harvesting and sowing to small fields, the SKGs are simply too slow. Which sounds in a, uh, like a bit funny. <laughs> but yeah, this combination does not do it as much. Let's go to a special setup of the mid-game variant, which is the farm plus the distribution office. And the good thing is we can decouple the storages from the farm because the distribution office will feed the storages from the field and uh, the farm can simply can have its pairs of tractor harvester one to one, but you have uh, three groups, uh, six groups now. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five and six combinations of tractor and harvester. And as we have seen before, the um, harvesting and uh, sowing is fast enough, but uh, pulling from the fields was too slow because also of the constraints of the SKDs. Now we have 12 SKDs, which means every combination of tractor and harvester gets two SKDs instead of one, which should be enough. Also, we can have a nicer setup of um, silos. So this is a go-to setup for me. So I have three silos and I will load into the middle silo and will push, it will push to the left and right silo. The same way here, I will assign the distribution office to the middle silo. So in comes it here and left and right it goes. If you want to export, you can uh, pull from the outer silos and it will also pull from the middle silo. So you don't have colliding traffic in a way. So in is in the middle always and out is on the left and right side, which is also important that the ports are free so you don't get into traffic jams. And also why I prefer the medium sized farm is because of the amount of fields. So now we can have <coughs> six big fields in uh, three groups. So this one is the first line, second line and third line. I will assign them accordingly and um, this takes a lot of space but this is a closed system where you have uh, the traffic you have and if you have a big field big farm where you can assign even more fields you have a traffic problem get really severe so um, rather have two medium-sized farms and this setup and uh, build two islands of fields than to have one big setup and uh, get into traffic problems. At least this is what, what I would do. So let's assign the fields. The same as before. So we go here and go on the other side of the field. So it starts first sowing here. If it's finished, you will start sowing here. And then uh, the last strain of fields here. Okay. Now the magic number of fields is also 18 because this one has 20 slots to load and you need two slots to get uh, the harvest in. So you go here and here and you say, okay, unload and unload and make it full, please. Okay. And then we pull out from the fields. The How you assign them is not so important from the perspective of the um, sequence, but you need to assign every one of them. Which is important. So we have uh, 20 fields assigned, everyone is full. Uh, we pull out the fields if it's greater than zero, which is nice. Okay, we are on the 3rd of March, so harvest can start. And uh, we start and I see you if the harvest is done in the end of the year. So let's go forward. Okay, so we are in the winter and uh, it's in the end of November. We have harvested, you see, uh, like 70% of the last field batch and uh, not everything is harvested, but the most stuff is in the warehouses. You see here, they are all full to the brim. <laughs> yeah, 93%. So uh, we have harvested 800 times six. So it is like... 800 times 3 is 2400 again times 2 is 4800 tons uh, we pull out of this farm and if you pull out at the same time so you have a factory which needs crops you can pull out from left and right um, your silos will not overfill 
what can be done better is uh, these tractors and harvesters are the first one you can get after the initial really bad ones so um, if you can upgrade your tractors or your harvesters you will make uh, all fields work at the moment not so much but it's better to waste some stuff than to have too little fields and uh, so this setup is okay but you need to take care of traffic and of driving time okay let's go to the next one the next combination is the late game combination and um, we are here in a quite good time frame 11th of november so we have 20 days to go we have the fast setup of tractors and harvesters and we have the fast kmz um, tractor trailer combinations and uh, you see here the fields are nearly uh, completely harvested but the silos are too small so i needed to empty the silos mid game because um, the fields put out more than the silos can handle so it's 12 fields yeah yeah 12 big fields so 12 fields should yield 3600 tons of grain and our silos only can take a little less to, uh, it's 800 time, tons times 4 which is 3200 so this one around here but let's go to the last setup which is the super modded setup and uh, here we see additional so they barely make it but uh, yeah some stuff is laying on the field but not so much and um, it is 12 big fields plus uh, four small fields at the start and uh, it generates the biggest output of them all with only one building one farm building and some storage you can make it really better work if you have uh, modern storage which i will come to when it comes to logistics but yeah this is the biggest output you can get with uh, uh, modded vehicles and the uh, glorious k700a tractor <laughs> really is a beast yeah so in the last segment we will talk about logistics okay let's talk about logistics this setup you see here is currently the worst setup you can have um, the silos are simply too small and what you can do is um, especially if you have our super modded farm here which has 12 hmm? has a 12 yeah 12 big fields and four small fields which will yield around 4000 tons of crops per season and you can also use these super trucks <laughs> which are american trucks um, from the store so these are uh, quite nice and big 17 tons of crops massive um, yeah so this farm would uh, pump in easily 4000 tons of crops per year and you need to modify your setup to accommodate this amount of cropage <laughs> because these do uh, 3200 tons which is not even enough and i like to have a full load in my in my grain silos so i don't lose any so the first thing we can do is use the distribution office with the distribution office you don't rely on the factory connections on the farm so you can uh, be a little bit more creative with your silo setup and i think this is a okayish looking setup where you have uh, three silos combined I mentioned it before if you load into the central one uh, from the fields you can pull out from the left and right one for the export and this is a really nice setup uh, you can deal with 18 fields and uh, two silos with a distribution office which also fits nicely to the farm which can handle then the um, 16 fields no, 18 fields sorry <laughs> 18 fields in three rows so first it will handle this one and then this one and then the last one the bottom ones um, this setup is also nice because uh, your farm setup will not get humongous and um, you have a restriction of traffic so build rather medium farms i would say than small farms or big farms because uh, the traffic will be obnoxious if you have two distribution offices uh, pulling out everything and you still have uh, export traffic so this one is the first option for the logistics 
The second option would be to go for um, modded storage options. So let's take a look into this one. I personally uh, love this solution here. This is my go-to silo because it looks like a Soviet silo, a proper Soviet silo, <laughs> which means business. Um, it's strong. It has a lot of grain to store. 3,080... Now why do you do this to me? 3,800 tons. Yeah. Which is uh, the harvest of one super farm. So uh, you can safely store one season of harvest into it and uh, you will not run out of space. You can pull out over the year uh, to a food factory or something with trucks or however you want to do it. But the uh, next option is also interesting, which would be a train based option. So let me come back to this one. The last option and my most preferred option is using trains. And uh, harvest is in full swing my super farm and they are harvesting what they can so the thing is if you have a good working train setup you don't need big buffers big buffers help there are also uh, grain silos which have a uh, connected rates situation but i like to keep it small and compact and simple so you can simply add this small vanilla storage here and it will have a buffer of crops the trick is your train needs to be faster <laughs> coming loading and unloading uh, in the harvesting season then the trucks are able to pull in the good stuff so our train here is waiting and another thing is if you have a waiting train instead of a distribution office so a train distribution office is great but uh, static lines are better if you have a waiting train setup you uh, extend your storage here if you have a distribution office, you diminish your storage. So this storage is extended by this train. You will have less traffic because he waits until he's full. After that, the buffer storage loads up. If you have a train distribution office, you need to wait until the buffer storage is full. Then it will send out the train and it needs to arrive until the storage don't overflow. So 500 tons here of buffer storage and the train has also 360 tons. So you need to wait until this one is 70% of full, which is far more time critical. If you have a waiting train here, which simply has uh, two objectives, wait and unload and go to the uh, grain hub, then uh, you have a good life. So how much are you? Yeah, nearly full. I will uh, show you the train uh, grain hub in a moment and I will create a separate video about the grain hub because it will uh, be a little bit too much for this video I think. There are information enough past here. You have seen different possibilities how to make it work, how to optimize it, uh, what you can do to make it better. Um, I have provided the bottom line so you know uh, how and when a farm works and what work, what would work. The simplest setup is mid-game, uh, go for three fields for the setup of <laughs> a, a tractor, a harvester and a distribution office in the background because the cover tolls. I like to keep my farm small uh, without the distribution office but it's a simple choice of mine. You don't have to. The distribution office uh, setup is also very powerful. Yep. And give them three fields to work on and it will be good. So, in a moment my train should leave. Let's see. Never look... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. And we are out and about to our uh, grain storage. So. The trick is your train needs to unload fast and be back on track so uh, your buffer storage don't overfill. And this grain storage is a grain hub uh, where you can connect up to multiple farms and it's for import and uh, export. So I'm importing the grain stuff from the farm and you see here that my trucks are all starting to work <laughs> yeah but i will describe how it works later on so also he is full so he will drive to the border and export the stuff you can also drive to a food or whatever you need your grains for but this the um 
hub is set up so that these, the top part is for import and the bottom part is for export. So these silos should be always uh, kept full if possible. Uh, my distribution offices are working on it. And um, these storages are simply for buffer. But like I said, I will make a second video about this, how this works, illustrating this. So this is my <laughs> best farm setup video and uh, my ideas about farming. And I hope you enjoyed it and liked it and have fun farming yourself. Bye bye, comrade.